Now, this is a recipe then for those of you who are following 100% plant-based or vegan diet. And it's a simple pasta dish, but it's just so, so delicious and very, very quick to put together. So I'm going to use this beautiful slow-dried pasta. It really does make a difference. And pasta's low GI, it's slow-release carbohydrates, so it's really, really good for you and a great, easy, quick meal that's budget-friendly. So I'm actually a big fan of pasta. Now, I'm going to chop up my veggies. And in this one, I'm going to use some red onion, some capsicum, some cherry tomatoes and some garlic. So get your pan nice and hot. Now, I'm going to keep my red onion into slivers. You can dice this really small if you prefer. But particularly when I'm using red onion, I quite often like it to have you know, that nice sort of texture and a wee bit more depth to it than just chopping it up into small dice. So I'm leaving it in those half circles. Add your red onion to the extra virgin olive oil in the pan. And then you just want to saute that for a few minutes to start softening the veggies. This time I'm using green capsicum. I most often use red, but the green has got an, I don't know, a slightly different flavor. It's not as sweet as red capsicum. And again, I'm just going to slice this into nice thin slivers. Pop the capsicum into the pan along with the onion. OK, let that cook for a few minutes just until those veggies are softened. OK, so I'm just going to add some cherry tomatoes and some garlic to the pan. Soften the tomatoes a little. And then I'm going to add my berlotti beans. Now, these are just canned berlotti beans. You can cook them from the dried version if you like pre-cook them and then add them, but honestly, the cans are absolutely perfect nutritionally. I'm just going to add a pinch of salt here and some black pepper. And then white wine, just whatever you've got open. If you don't want to add wine to it, you could just use some stock. Just let the alcohol evaporate off from there. Simmer it just for a moment. You'll smell the wine taste starts to sort of dissipate, and that's when you're kind of ready to add the next ingredients. And then here is this very, very clever ingredient. You know, in the old days, we hardly got any good vegan alternatives to animal foods, but this is an award-winning vegan cream. And you would not believe how close, I mean, I think the technology, I mean, look at that, it even looks like cream, which is great for those of you who want that versatility, want to recreate these kinds of dishes, get that creamy sauce, creamy pasta sauce kind of flavour, look and feel without having an animal product. Doesn't that look good? Beautiful. OK, last ingredients. I've got some olives. You could put in some capers there. Nicely sliced up, mix the olives through. And then just check your pasta. You want the pasta to be al dente, which means it just should have a little bit of bite to it. When your pasta is about ready, that's when you're going to put your spinach into the pan. There's nothing worse than overcooked spinach. That's when it just goes kind of slimy and horrid. And then I want to add a generous amount of fresh basil. I will put some more on the top and just roughly rip it. Rip it straight into the pan. And by doing that, you're also preserving a lot of the nutrients that are in those basil leaves as well as in the spinach, including some of the vitamin C. Vitamin C's enemies are air, light and heat. So the less that you can do to things like leafy greens that have some vitamin C present, the less you can do to them and you're cooking, the better. Just add them through. So when I add this hot pasta, I can turn this off now, that's just going to help wilt the rest of that spinach down. OK, give it all a good stir to combine. I'm going to add a touch more black pepper onto the top there. Check your seasoning to make sure you've got the right amount of salt. And we are ready to plate up. Look how glossy and lovely and creamy that pasta is. So just spoon it out. And I reckon this is good enough for if you want to do a meat-free or animal-free day. And then I'm just going to top it with, would you believe it, you can even get some vegan Parmesan cheese. So that goes onto the top, adds a bit of extra flavour. And then just a few little basil leaves on the top just to finish off. And that is a vegan meal that anyone is going to love, I reckon.